amen. Let's all stand together. We welcome you back tonight to our evening worship service. And uh, so glad that you're here starting this season off right and uh, certainly within the parameters of this morning's message. So praise the Lord and uh, let's rejoice in Him tonight. Lift our voices, praise His holy name. We're going to start off with a couple songs just about that name. I love to tell a story going into there's just something about that name, which is, of course, we love. And then we'll tag in a Christmas song a little bit later on. But hymn 351, if you want to use your hymnals. And then let's start there as we worship him. We'll sing the first, second, and last verses together. something that we should do not just in song but in everyday conversations right how many of you recognize the name Gerald Wolf for you Southern Gospel fans Gerald Wolf okay Gerald Wolf sings with greater vision maybe you've heard that name they've been in Wilson many times before maybe if not the face one of the faces of Southern Gospel music very conservative very great singer plays the piano too, just, just all around a talent from God. If you listen to him talk now, and I'm not making fun, but if you listen to him talk now, Brother Jimmy, it kind of it sounds like, like this as he tries to get words out. And if you have XM Radio, he still has a show on there that he'll do, and you, you can hear the voice I'm talking about. And I heard him this week make the comment, he was referred to a song that he loved to sing, and he was asked to sing it again with a big orchestra. And I, if you know Gerald Wolf, you know the significance of this statement. He said, I can't sing no more. He hasn't lost a song. He hasn't quit ministering. He still leads singings all over this nation. In fact, the Milan Hayes, ever since they left here, they've been teaming up with, with Gerald Wolf in a, in a lot of services. But his voice has gone to where he can't sing no more. And he mentioned a company that went back to his early years, and they took this song that was requested with this orchestra, and they, they laid it on top, Bobby. They took his voice, and they laid it on top, and he sang it in his younger voice. And the Holy Spirit just touched me and said, you know what? We better not take for granted the opportunities we have to start off every service and lift our voices in praise. Because there could come a day where the strain and the use of our voice begins to minimize and we no longer can offer a praise through song. Now, I'm thankful we can still have a praise. And Gerald Wolf still has a praise, and he's using it for the Lord's glory. But he can't sing like God's gift to him. So let's sing these last two verses out. And every verse that we sing uh, for the Lord with all that we can, thanking him for his goodness and his blessings. On verse 2 together.
God will be singing then. Amen. Let's go to him in a word of prayer, and then we're going to uh, mix it up just a little bit, and uh, we'll go ahead and have our birthdays and announcements after this prayer, and then we'll come back together in song in just a moment. Uh, Brother Allen, good to have your family well and back with us. Would you mind standing and uh, leading us in this opening prayer? Yes, amen. Thank you, brother. Aren't you thankful when we come together, the Spirit of God comes with us, and it worships and ministers to our heart. Without him, we are nothing, and uh, so thank you, Brother Allen, for that good reminder. All right, we have some December birthdays and anniversaries, then we'll turn it over to uh, Brother Caleb to come and guide us through uh, the announcements that are forthcoming and privy to us. So if you're, we call you out, and uh, you're here tonight, all right, uh, stand up uh, for us, if you will. And hold out till we get everybody. If you're not on the list, okay, don't throw a hymn book at anybody. Just please let Miss World know. She can only update these lists. And uh, as she gets in, uh, into the office, and uh, if you just tell somebody, man, sometimes we're all human. That's easy to forget. And so put that on a piece of paper. Get it to Miss World. She'll get that added in, no doubt. And uh, we can help celebrate with you. If you're online, couldn't be here tonight, sick or something, and you have a birthday, uh, make a comment. And uh, we'll read it after service. But uh, let's uh, recognize... Uh, December 2nd already, Miss Gail has uh, celebrated her birthday, and, uh, and then we'll just go in order since there's only one today. Brother Linwood, if he's been smiling big all day, and uh, today's their anniversary, Linwood Cade, and so happy anniversary, brother. Go ahead and stand for us. Then on birthdays, the other brother Linwood, Brother Linwood Braswell on the 5th, uh, will be celebrating the uh, same day as Mr. Tanner Edwards on the 5th, all right, will be celebrating a birthday. Miss Cheyenne Falk on the 10th, Miss Geraldine on the 11th. Uh, Miss Connie, you don't have to stand, okay, <laughs> on the 15th. Uh, Miss Mary Catherine on the 17th. Brother Carol on the 22nd. Brother Jason on the 23rd, all right, and Miss Yvonne on the 29th. So no Christmas babies, and I uh, think Miss Lindsay's brother's on Christmas, isn't it? And, um, and uh, so that's our birthdays and our anniversary that we have on record, okay? And so let's sing to them, and then let's see, where's Cheyenne? She's going to help me tonight. You come on up here, and she's going to help me draw. Somebody's going to leave a little happier with a box of chocolates. All right, let's tune it up and uh, sing for these individuals, all right? Happy birthday.
out, you got to keep your end of the bargain, all right? Reach in there and draw. She said, preacher, what if I draw my own name? And so we struck a deal if she draws her own name. I have to see what she has to do here. Oh, well, you would be safe, but they're not here tonight, so you get another chance, all right? Draw again. Well, hey, that's pretty good, because I'm pretty sure she will share with you. Did you recognize that name? You did. Who was it? Mima. <laughs> All right. I'm pretty sure Mima will share those right there. All right, let's give Miss Connie a hand. How fitting, all right? God bless you, sis. And I wish all of you just a wonderful year, and may God enrich you uh, spiritually and uh, just help you out throughout the course of uh, the year. All right? I believe that's all I have at this time. Uh, so, Brother Caleb, you come. And uh, walk us through our announcements. A few things to remember as we uh, move forward through the rest of our service for this evening. First of all, in our offering for tonight, remember it is our Moldova missions offering for the first night of every uh, first Sunday. I'm sorry, of every single month, all the offering that we collect tonight, unless it's otherwise designated somewhere, will go out to support Brother Grisha, our missionary out in Moldova. So please keep that in uh, in mind. As we go into our offering in just a couple of minutes, I was asked to clarify something for our Secret Sisters uh, reveal for tonight. First of all, ladies, we love every single one of you. We do. But we do want to clarify that the Secret Sister reveal tonight is only for the ladies who participated in the Secret Sisters uh, for this past year. So we did want to keep that in mind for this one, <clears throat> just for this evening. So it is only for the ladies who participated in the Secret Sisters for this past year. That is going to be immediately after the service tonight. Miss Hannah has got sandwiches and a few other snacks. Lady, some other ladies did provide some other snacks. Thank you all so much for that. And ladies, you'll have a wonderful time of fellowship over there as well immediately after the service. All right, then this coming up Saturday on December. 9th we do have the kids Christmas play rehearsal parents <clears throat> that that the uh, rehearsal starts at 10 30 please have your kids here before 10 30 it would be a great blessing we can get everything situated the kids can run through it a few a uh, few times before that all right and choir we remember we will have another rehearsal that day we went over that during choir practice uh as well but then also parents immediately after uh, the kids cantata rehearsal on saturday we will go into their christmas party as well here at the church and we'll keep you updated on the times for that but we're looking to end right around 1 30 for the uh, uh for the christmas party for our kids for this year all right so do keep that in mind and we'll send out a text with a bit more information about that as well later on this uh later on this week but parents we are asking to uh for each kid to please bring a five dollar gift something small something that is uh gender neutral something that all kids can enjoy because uh, the kids will go through a little bit of a gift exchange game where they ain't going to know who's going to end up with their gift so please try to remember that uh for their uh, for their party this coming up saturday and then we're very excited for uh next sunday on the 10th we're going to be able to enjoy in the evening service uh, our kids cantata and their Christmas play for that evening we're very excited for them keep them in prayer as they continue to practice and to rehearse and we do thank all of our uh, all of our teachers who have been so involved in getting the kids ready for that and we're sure it'll be a wonderful blessing and then on D December 13th, that's a Wednesday evening, we do have a business meeting for that night. So if you are a member here at the church, uh, when you're here that night, please stay for a few minutes after the service, and we will uh, take care of a couple of items for that evening. And then on December 16th, we forgot to mention it this morning, but we did want to uh, let everyone know, for parents, that is going to be the teens Christmas party on December 16th. And we are looking to be here at the church at 5.30, please. 5.30 here at the church. We've got a couple of things that, will be, that we think, uh, the, some things that we haven't really done in the past before, but we're sure everybody will enjoy and greatly appreciate. And we'll send out that information to y'all uh, this week as well. And then after that, on December 17th, we have got our Christmas cantata and the evening worship service. So we do appreciate our choir members. Had a wonderful practice today. Have several more planned as well to be able to get everything ready uh, for the cantata. We do appreciate all the soloists who have agreed to uh, sing solos during the cantata. And we do appreciate your heart and service for it. And then on December 20th, we have got our church Christmas party and dinner here at the, uh, at the church. That is going to be at 630 that is here, 6.30, December 20th, over in the Family Life Center for our Christmas party and dinner service. And then, of course, uh, after that, on December 24th, Christmas Eve uh, in the evening, we will have our candlelight service, as we do in times like this, as we are blessed to have the opportunity to have service on Christmas Eve as well. But that is what we have right now in the way of announcements. We're going to move into our time. Uh, is it offering?
Yep, our men are ready in the back, but we called an audible. I don't know if y'all could hear us out there, but we came to the line and called an audible. Uh, mix things up a little bit. So y'all are encouraged and welcome to stay in and sing with us one song. But we got one more song to sing before we collect our offering. And then we got to dismiss our discipleship class. This is the last time uh, they have to meet for the year. But we don't want you to miss the Christmas music. So we're going to sing two verses of it and uh, then dismiss you and come back and sing the last one and then go into our offering. So let's all stand together. Hymn 128. Hymn 128, O Little Town of Bethlehem. We'll sing the first and third. I believe that's what we have in there, brother. First and first uh, couple verses anyways, and then we'll break, shake some hands, let our discipleship dismiss out. sections uh, two and four if you'll lead the way.
Amen. Thank you, Miss Jenny. And as a blessing and a good reminder. Take your Bibles and go to Psalm 139. Appreciate her ministering to us tonight, although she's not felt the best herself. You are used of the Lord tonight to be a blessing to us, and we thank you for that. Psalm 139. Just a couple seconds for the pages to find their resting place for the next little bit. Let's pray together if we can. Heavenly Father, you have met with us today, and for that we're thankful and grateful. As we were reminded already, Lord, the prayer of our brother Alan, we invite and need your spirit amongst us. Lord, without you, we, we are nothing, and if we just meet here for the fellowship, although we enjoy it, and for the singing, although we enjoy it, and the word, Lord, we, we need your spirit. I need you tonight. So I pray that you'll bless me and help me, and I pray that you'll bless your word tonight. It is in your son's name we pray and ask these things. Amen. I don't often do this. I wanted to last week, but I did not for the sake of time. But I do want to do it tonight. And so let's jump in to Psalm 139, and what I'm referring to is reading the whole passage uh, there. The Bible says, Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. As we go through this, I, lo I love my junior boys class, they, and even tonight they've got highlighters out there. There's certain verses, maybe highlight, underline, mark, just good to mark as we go through, and this chapter is full of them. Thou knowest my downsitting and my uprising, thou understandest my thought afar off. Compasseth my path, my lying down, and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it all together. You ever say some things and turn around and say, Phew, glad nobody heard me? Doesn't work for the believer, does it? Thou hast beset me behind and before and laid thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain unto it as he fathoms the awesomeness of God and everything uh, God does in light of him he's already saying the fuses are beginning to blow in his mind whither shall I go from thy spirit or whither shall I flee from thy presence if I ascend up into heaven thou art there if I make my bed in hell behold thou art there if I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea even there shall thy hand lead me and my right hand shall hold me if I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee, for thou hast possessed my reins and hast covered me in my mother's womb. And then verse 14 picks up with where we want our focus and attention. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works. And that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect. And in thy book all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God. How great is the sum of them. Verse 17 gets overlooked so much. That is a magnificent verse. Wonderful, beautiful verse. Continuing on, if I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with thee. Surely thou wilt slay the wicked, O God. Depart from me, therefore, ye bloody men, for they speak against thee wickedly, and thine enemies take thy name in vain. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee? Am I not aggrieved with those that rise up against thee? I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them mine enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way of everlasting. Now, in just reading this passage, you already know 
I don't think any preacher should, but this preacher is certainly not going to try to preach that whole passage in one time. Because, Brother Bobby, there's so many verses there that are just wow moments, wow verses, read and weep type verses, to realize how good and awesome God is, and how favorable he has been to you and me, a wretched people, lost and dying in need of a hope only his son Jesus could bring. And then as the psalmist closes in the familiar verses of the chapter, search me, O God. Know my ways. You know, God knows our thoughts right now. He knows our intentions. He knows our every thought and action. Even when we think nobody else does, God does. And I'm thankful tonight that's the God we serve. Amen? All of our lives have hit dirt different seasons or chapters where life maybe went from going smooth to facing some, some difficulties. Our church family is very uh, well aware of the needs sitting even represented right here in this room as Wednesday night our, is our prayer time together and we lift up different family members and needs and loved ones and spouses and children we call out to God, and so we are very aware of how quickly life can go from uh, the top of the roller coaster uh, down to the bottom, seemingly, of the roller coaster, and life changes with its ups and downs, and we go from seasons of joy to seasons of, of difficulty. We have moments of victory, and quite frankly, how many understand we do have moments of defeat uh, in uh, the Christian life? We don't live defeated, amen, uh, but we have moments uh, where we face this and struggle this with this but one thing I'm praising the Lord for tonight that although life is ever changing before us there's one constant in all of our lives as believers so you've been married more than 50 years and even after being married that long uh, your spouse is not always 100% of the time the constant that you need him or her to be or expect him or her to be right? But God is always constant. He's always the same, and he's always there for his presence and his provision in the life of the believer. So tonight we take comfort as we launch this thought from this passage tonight. We take comfort in knowing there's nothing in our lives. Think about this. There's nothing in our lives that God does not already see and know, even before it hits our radars. God already knows about it. We all are blessed with lives beyond measure, aren't we? And maybe that's the thought I want you to hold on to tonight as we look, first of all, at how special life is. At how special life is. When you go back in that text with me to verse 14, we often see that on the walls of of nurseries and in uh, 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 classrooms that teach uh, younger children because we often associate verse 14 with children, don't we? But let's read it again because my Bible says, I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works and my soul knoweth right well. Nowhere in that passage, although I understand the practical context in helping young children understand how they are fearfully and wonderfully made. How many of you also understand that that is not limited to just young children? That that is not a plaque that only fits in the junior church building or, or the Sunday school uh, classroom for the little kids. It, it certainly is for you little kids, and you need to know that God, God has made you in such a fearful and such a wonderful and amazing and awesome way. And, and if we took just the science side of that, okay, we would not finish tonight in, in time for the ladies' gift exchange for the secret sis. And so I'm not going to bring all of that element into the message tonight, but oh my, how complicated to us, how complicated our bodies are. But yet how simplistic and smooth flowing God has made them. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. Life is very special. 
we battle that very truth today, don't we? We live in a society that adopts four words, pro-life or pro-choice. Pro-life is the biblical stance that we know God, our uh, creator, uh, takes and ordains us as believers to take. Pro-choice is a nice way of trying to word and cover up murder. But that is the battle that we face today when it comes to life. Is this life being born valued enough to allow it to be born? Or do we take this life before it has a chance to live? Is this life, that this is what it comes down to for some. Y'all know I'm telling you the truth. Is this life, does this life that is about to be born fit the schedule and the agenda of the young parent who may made some poor decisions and is now faced with bringing a life into, does it fit their agenda? Does it fit their schedule? Is it convenient for them? How horrible does this sound? Or is it an inconvenience to them? And do you know that here in America, the greatest nation this side of heaven, that if a baby is considered to be an inconvenience, that not only can that life be taken, but lives after life after life after life, countless lives are taken for that very reason. Regardless of the circumstance, the pro-choice crowd, I mean, the list is just unroll. It just goes on. Because whatever that couple or that mother or the consultation with the mother and doctor decides, they just add it to the list. Say, oh, okay, you know, okay, then, then we're going to take the life of the baby. That is not of God. That is not included in verse 14. There is not a baby born that does not fall under the truth of verse 14. Can I get an amen right there? Every single one of us, no matter how ugly some of you guys are, are fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God. And every life is special. Did you hear me? Every life is special. And oh, how our hearts would break to think about, oh, goodness, the lives that have been taken and the special young ladies and young men that could have been born and grown and, and maybe met the Lord through a track or a, or a bus or a van route or a church that loved them and reached out in the community. And they get into the house of God and they get born again. They get saved. They live for Jesus and they go on to accomplish great things for him. But yet that life is taken before it ever has an opportunity to live. That is the world we live in. But hear me, church, loud and clear. Every life is special. And every life has a special purpose. I'm thankful to be on the side of the pro-lifers. And hear me, kindly, I make no apology for it. And if you want to be a pro-choicer, make that choice before you get to the hospital. When you have another living body and life inside of you. Amen? And I'm not being cruel. I'm just telling you the facts how it is. I'm pro-life. Miss Lindsay is elated that my mother was pro-life. Can I get an amen right there? Can I get a hand of praise? Can I get something? It was a test. I was just checking. <laughs> Every life is special. And I'm not interested in all the arguments and debates the pro-choice crowd comes up with. I'm interested in what the Bible says. And when the Bible says that every child born, every person born, every life is fearfully and wonderfully amazed, it causes me to step back and to stand amazed. Whew. To stand amazed at the awesome God we serve. 
that would make each of us fearfully and wonderfully in his image. We've been created through a process that brings astonishment and awe. That's what the word fearfully means. It's not a spooky, gotcha, made you scream fear. But to stand back in awe. If, guys, if we understood and if we did look at the scientific side of how our creator created us, we would be in awe. Some of you are in awe just to get up in the morning, right? And your knees work and you walk. And you have, amen. But we would be in awe. How awesome our creator has created us. And wonderfully made. We're made distinct. We're marked out. We're distinguished. And in God's eyes, it's all in a good way. <laughs> Sometimes we get marked out by humans in the wrong way. But here, we're wonderfully made. And each and every one of us, listen to me. We're different, but we're precious in the sight of God. Praise God for that. We're different, but yet we're still precious in his sight. And we're made, as Genesis 1 says in verse 26 and 27, in the very image and likeness of God. Kids at school, think twice before you pick on another kid or laugh at a kid or make a joke about a kid. That's a special life. Adults, be careful before you, you shun off a child that maybe look a little different or sound a little different or act a little different. You be careful, my friend. That is a precious and special life in the sight of Almighty God. And they ought to be treated as such. Amen? They ought to be treated. Every life is special. But notice verse 15 goes on. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Now, we obviously could go on and on just on verse 14, but I'm just going to try to get a little more of this in. So I want us to look now at the phrase curiously wrought. It's not, it's not language we use today, right? I mean, we recognize the root words within those words, but we don't go around talking like that. But the phrase has the idea of an artist mixing the colors of a portrait and skillfully weaving everything together within that portrait. I remember the first time many of you couples participated in this that were here at the time over in the old building. I mean, you remember the Art of Marriage Marriage Retreat we did here. A few of you couples were here, even though y'all don't remember. I remember y'all being here, okay? <laughs> okay. And you remember, if you've seen it, there was a painting that was done. And I remember as I first watched that painting, I was like, I don't, I don't have a clue what this person is painting. Or maybe it's these paintings now that they do, Brother Linwood, the artist is so talented, they paint it upside down. And so when they're painting it to, to our eye, it doesn't look like anything, and everybody's kind of disinterested, and then they flip it around. And you see the awesomeness. So this idea of curiously uh, wrought uh, has the idea of a painter carefully mixing the, the colors and the shapes and, and, and the different sizes of this thing together or, or somebody that takes a fabric and weaves it together and you don't know what it's going to look like. But then all of a sudden, when they get to a certain point, you start seeing how awesome the project is they're working on. You finally start seeing the, the heart and the, the eye of the painter can I tell you God was very specific in how he made you and me huh now we all know that common sense says that we've lived long enough that hey we've all made choices that has affected the way that we look and feel can I get an amen there but God made us in a very specific way very detailed by the way the Bible says down to every hair that's on your head. There's only so many good-looking heads, Brother Vance, right, that God can show off. The rest he had to cover with hair. I'm starting to get in that first category a little quicker than I would like. But I'm just going to thank God for my beautiful head. Amen? Hey, our eyes, 
everything about us, God was very specific. Now, has mankind paused? Has mankind made some choices, and do we make some choices every day that is not a reflection on how God made us? Oh, yeah. Okay, so just because you go to work tomorrow, or you go to school tomorrow, or you go about your week, and, and you do something, so, well, bless God, God made me this way. Well, how about repent of your sinful humanity and your flesh, and get in step with God, and you'll be a better version of you, okay? So don't try to use the, oh, well, God, maybe, you know, fooey, quit that. But he has weaved every part of our lives together, created us and designed us Exactly like he wants us with a purpose. You ready for this? You ever heard somebody say, my life don't have no purpose? If they're a believer, all of our lives have purpose. And that is to please and glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. And the ways that he opens for us and allows us to do that. Our physical attributes. It's what oftentimes people focus on when we see somebody, right? We describe somebody. Most of the time, the description includes more physical attributes than it does anything else. It's it's easier to do, of course, practical. But God designed us (laughs) internally so much more than what we just realize and see on the outside. Right, church? And spiritually speaking, hang on. God designed each of us with a purpose and a plan. So go ahead and stop right now and ask, God, am I fulfilling your purpose? Not my desires, not my wishes, but am I fulfilling your purpose and your plan fully with my life? See, we're reminded of this truth in the book of Jeremiah when God said, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctify thee and ordain thee a prophet unto the nations. Now, that doesn't mean that God ordained everyone from David over here to Miss Wanda to be a prophet to the nations. But that does mean that God had a purpose and a plan for you before you ever hit the womb and before you ever came out. God already knew. That's how specific he is. So never should a Christian say, well, I just don't know, I have no purpose in life. That's a lie from the devil. You were created with purpose, my friend. And long before you and I knew what that purpose was, God knew. Brother Wayne, long before 10 plus years ago, God began working on my heart that I knew that I would come to Wildwood and that I knew that I would sit over there in a, in a room with men in it, and you were one of them and talk to you guys and candidate and pray together about coming here and pastoring this. Long before God started working my heart in 2012, God already knew. That's awesome. And God knows the purpose and the plan that he has for every one of us. And I want to park here just for a minute before we get to the last point. If God has a purpose and a plan for our life, then what do you think an almighty God wants us to do in relation to that purpose and that plan? It's not to read about it in the newspaper newspaper and walk away from it. It's not a newspaper, is it? It's a newspaper. Thank you, Cass. God doesn't want us to to feel the call and, and feel, hey, man, this is how I can fulfill my purpose for Christ and then avoid that. Does he? So I ask the question again. What does God want us to do with our purpose and plan in relation or with our life in relation to his purpose and plan? Fulfill it. Live up to it. Fulfill your calling. Every one of you have a purpose. Are you fulfilling it? God was specific enough to dot every I and cross every T. I promise you. But you got to find it and fulfill it. Young people, all over this place. Y'all working on that picture for me, Lily? Okay. Hey, you know bigger than that picture? God has a purpose for you. Teenagers, God has a purpose for you. 
Kids, God has a purpose for you. Teenagers, kids, they're everywhere in here. I love them. Kenny, you're about to transition a little bit in life, aren't you? Awesome time. Scary time. Fearful sometimes. Anxious. But sweetheart, God has a plan for you. And although you may have a bunch of question marks, or God doesn't, he knows. Robbie, God still got a plan for you, even though the choir did kick you out tonight. I mean, we voted them in in 10 seconds, and the choir kicked them right back out 10 seconds later. Hey, God's got a purpose for you. I don't want to say who's the oldest, because I don't want to make nobody feel bad. I know, I'll keep it to myself. God's got a purpose for you. I love the talks we've had, brother, over the, the years of serving, and several times it's come up, God's not done with me yet. Hey, God's got a purpose. Whether you got black hair, brown, brown hair, red hair, green hair, or no hair. Or white hair, I should throw that in, right? God is very specific. And church, in these what we consider last days we're living in, God wants to fulfill that purpose in your life. Young men, God's still calling young men to preach. Oh, the fields are, are white. So much work to be done for the Lord. Young ladies, God's still calling for young people to surrender their life. You say, well, preacher, I don't know what I'm surrendering to. Well, let me help you. You're surrendering to the one who created you. Don't worry about, well, is it going to be a teacher or a missionary or a preacher? Am I going to be in the States or overseas? Am I going to see my parents once a year or never again? Quit it. If you can trust them, then just start by surrendering your life to him and saying, Lord, whatever, whenever, and however, I'm yours. But Jimmy, I remember the evening service. <laughs> Traywick Road, Raleigh, North Carolina, at the Beacon Baptist Church. I grew up in a pastor's home. I knew all the stuff. But God had to work on my heart personally. As a young teenager, I believe I, I believe I was 13, may have just turned 14 because the way that this conference falls in the new year and I'm a new year baby, but maybe I was about to be 14. And I remember going up to the, to the right side of the old, the old chapel now at Beacon. And there was a tall, tall knee wall here that blocked the instruments. And David, I remember kneeling there and God didn't call me to preach that night. In fact, if you'd have told me that night I'd have been standing up in front of people preaching, I probably, in my humanity, would have stayed in my pew. But I went that night with a feeling I let go. And that night at Beacon Baptist Church at the conference they've done for decades, I yielded my life and surrendered. I said, Lord, I don't know how you're going to use me. But I want you to know that I'm surrendering my life to you. And Lord, whatever that means. It wasn't until later in life he called me to preach and solidified that in my heart. But that night I know I nailed it down. That I was surrendering my life to his purpose and his plan. Can I tell you, no matter how well you have it figured out, God's got you beat. He's more specific than you could ever and I could ever, and we, some of us OCD about specifics, but he's more specific than we could ever be or think about being when it comes to our life. So the question is not, well, what am I to do with my life and bite all your nails off? The question is, will you surrender your life to the one who created you? It's special, it's specific, 
And I want you to notice verses 17 and 18. Man, probably not even going to preach these, just going to read them. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with you. Think about that, verse 17. How precious are thy. Who's the thy? Who's the thy church? I'm, I'm hearing it. It's God. How precious are thy thoughts unto me, O God. He says, and this don't overwhelm your spirit. He says, God, I acknowledge your thoughts are so numerous. Your thoughts of me are so numerous that they would outlast the sand that's by the sea. Ruthie, have you ever picked up a, a, a handful of sand and then just kind of turn your hands sideways and just let them grains just start running out? Yeah. If you do it slow, it'll kind of go a little bit at a time. But if you do it sideways, it just whoo, kind of pours out, doesn't it? We couldn't count the grains of sand in our hand. And to think that an almighty God, Brother Linwood, our creator, who is very specific in the way he created us, has that many thoughts towards us. Now let's rein this in. And you think he doesn't know about your little situation you got going on? Honey, he's ten thousand million thoughts ahead of you he's got it and our lives are made with purpose from the youngest to the most seasoned are you fulfilling that purpose there's a book or movie out something like uh, God's not dead something like that was that a book or movie hey I'm going to put one out God's not done Y'all get behind that? Y'all support that if we if we go national with that? God's not done. And he wants to work through your in your life and through your life. And when we realize that we can trust the creator. Hey, Brother Caleb, I'd go back to that moment at Beacon Baptist Church a thousand times. And I'd do it a thousand times over. Because I've learned that I can trust him. I'm learning. Let me rephrase that. Because none of us have arrived. I'm learning. I can trust him. And although I may not understand. Although I may not like it. God's got it. And we were fearfully and wonderfully made. And God knows every specific minute thing about each and every one of us just makes me want to praise him amen God you are so good to each and every one of us so if you, I don't know what to play for an invitation tonight unless God's given you something maybe I will serve thee because I love thee Lord, you have designed each and every one of us so specifically, so beautifully.